Howdy, y'all. We're the Octobers, and today we got something good for you. We got Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie, The Hateful Eight. So we've tried to do this intro like five times now, and I really hope this one sticks because it's the first time you hit him with the howdy, y'all. <laughs> so I, I really like that. We should start more movies like that. Guys, Quentin Tarantino can't miss. I know I've said that basically in every movie, but we have been on a run. We're at Hateful Eight. Let us know in the comments section because we have learned at this point that so much of Quentin Tarantino movies, there's so much inspiration and stuff like that from like older pieces of cinema and stuff. So if there's any facts like that that we need to know heading into this movie, drop them down below. Those are always fun to read. And I'm just excited to get into another masterpiece by the zoo. This is three hours, so I'm really hoping this is like three hours of pure theater like it always Absolutely. has been. Absolutely. Guys, we have been on this Tarantino run all the way from Reservoir Dogs to now. So check that playlist out. These movies have been phenomenal, and I can't wait to finish them out. They're also different, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, they really are. And let us know below what is your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to say Pulp Fiction, but I don't know, man. That's really hard. I think we like the Kill Bill. Yeah, I mean, I, think we like the Kill Bill. I mean, you know what? If uh, you were to ask two. me on a given day, I would probably give you a different answer because I like them all in a weird way. I even like Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Like, remember when he's like, don't point that gun at my dad. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Do you remember <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, I do remember that. These movies are just going crazy, man. So if you love Tarantino, man, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hit us up on Patreon. We have the full extended editions over there. And just like the video, you know what right. I'm saying? Uh, it's not free for you guys. We do, you know, we charge a small little something, something. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is like the video and then you're just paid up and then you can join the theater and come watch it with us. So <laughs> let's go guys. Let's go. Sounds like a Tarantino movie. Wow, that's an interesting wide angle. Is that a fence? The eight, yes. Stomach Matt. <laughs> Dang, that's Jesus, ain't it? Oh, what? I didn't even notice. This is an expensive cast. I'm already seeing. <laughs> I feel like something's about it. My bad, I got interrupted. I didn't realize it was a what's that? A horse and buggy? It looks like it. This is a lot like Red Dead Redemption too. Ultra seventies Panavision. Was that not the craziest shot you've ever seen? Last stage to Red Rock. Okay. Got room for one more? Who the hell are you? Name's Major Marcus Warren. Trying to bring a couple no goods in the market. That damn blasted blizzard has been on our ass for the last three hours. May I come aboard? Is it up to me? Yes, but it ain't up to me. Who's it up to? Fella in the wagon, he paid for a private trip. You're gonna have to talk to him. Aren't y'all like trying to run from a wizard though? Hold it, right. black fella. You take them two guns of yours and you lay them on that rock over yonder. And you raise both your hands way above your hat. And then you approach molasses like. <laughs> Slow. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does got a couple bodies under him. Right, yeah. I need to see that paperwork. Put him down. And you know Samuel L, if he'll shoot you in a trunk, he'll shoot you in a buggy. <laughs> I said way above your hat, goddammit. Now come forward. You black fella I know, Colonel Major Mark was warned. You John Roof the hangman. So why don't you explain to me what an African bounty hunter's doing wandering around that in the snow the in the middle of Wyoming? Trying to get a couple of bounties in the Red Rock. Well, I knew he was a bounty hunter. You don't know nothing about this filly here. Nope. Major Marquis Warren, this here's Daisy Domergu. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's got a black eye. <laughs> Maybe you might heard tell about the price on her head. $10,000. What's she do? Kill Lily Langtree? <laughs> that 10000 is practically in my pocket. I ain't got no designs on her. One of my fellas over there is worth 4000 another one's worth three, and one of them's worth one. It's damn sure good enough for me. <laughs> so they're in the same business. Yeah, they're both bounty hunters. And Kurt Russell beat that girl up, and I guess he's got her held captive. Well, you can bring bounties dead or alive. Right, so. yeah. Wanted dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> she's a she's a beach. <laughs> he called her a pepper. <laughs> 
I sure hate to interrupt you all, but we got a cold damn blizzard that we're trying to beat to shelter. Shut your mouth and hold them damn horses while I think. Right, you're just the Uber <laughs> driver. You sh- <laughs> Right, you ain't really gonna let that ride in here, is you? I mean, maybe up there with OB, but- How you like the sound of them bells, bitch? <laughs> you open up your trashy mouth again, I'll knock out them front teeth for you, you got it? Oh, she's leaking. I got it. Uh, I'm gonna need a hand tying these fellas up on the roof. Give OB $50 when we get to Red Rock, he'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to help him get his luggage. <laughs> Now, I can't likely help you tie fellas to the roof with my wrist cuffed to hers. And my wrist is gonna stay cuffed to hers till I personally put her in a Red Rock jail. <laughs> hey, but that's smart, though. She's 10 grand and he has to carry, like, three different bodies for less than that. Yeah. And she's alive. She can carry herself damn near. I wonder what that sweet little peach did, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know, for 10 grand. <laughs> I guess she didn't do nothing as bad as shooting Lincoln. Like, left side, strong side. <laughs> They're beautiful. I just want to give him carrot. Do you know what I'm talking about? Nope. You know that movie, that football movie? No. Nope. What's it called? Remember the <laughs> Titans or something like that? Nope. Well, the black guy and the white guy got to learn to get along because they're on the same team. And they're like, left side, strong side. <laughs> so what happened to your horse? He's kind of old. When weather took a turn for the worse, well, he done what he could, but he couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. Who's this Daisy Damagoo? No damn good murdering bitch, that's you. I see you ain't got mixed emotions about bringing a woman to a rope. By woman, you mean her? <laughs> I want to hear her neck snap with my own two ears. Get up, boy. Dang, that's why he kept her alive? My bounties never hang, because I never bring men alive. Bringing desperate men in alive is a good way to get yourself dead. You can't catch me sleeping if I don't close my eyes. Ooh. That little lady, why they call him the hang. When the handbill oh. says dead or alive, the rest of us shoot you in the back. But when John Roof, the hangman, catches you, you hang. He's like, you already know. <laughs> I give you, he got guts. But in the brain's the bombing. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> when I elbow you real hard in the face, that means shut up. But to be fair, though, how many times has she got to get hit before she learns? I know that sounds terrible to say, but Jesus, you're a prisoner. Come on now, boy, <laughs> oh, she's just twisted, huh? She likes it. Little apple blossom, why, come and tell me what you're thinking. She's here for it. That's all I can say about her. Yeah, she's thinking about the next thing to say. She'll she probably escape. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the theme of this movie. She's going to come around and bite him in the ass. <laughs> the hateful eight's got to keep Daisy around. Yeah. You still got it? The Lincoln letter. Of course. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd sure appreciate seeing that again. The Lincoln letter. It's crazy they know each other, too. Or they've, like, ate dinner together. See, it's how you saved my life and all. I suppose I can let you read it again. <laughs> Are we going to have to guess? I'm assuming this is after the Emancipation Proclamation, right? Obviously. Well, he brought up John Wilkes Booth. Old Mary Todd's calling. So oh, yeah, I yeah, guess yeah, it yeah. must be time for bed. And that gets me. <clears throat> you know what this is, Tramp. It's a letter from Lincoln. Are you kidding? Oh, what the f <laughs> Stop! <laughs> he slapped her out the damn buggy. That was his left, too. <laughs> I'll rip my goddamn arm off! <laughs> Are they about to be enemies now? <laughs> I hope not. They was getting along so good. <laughs> hey, what's that right there in the snow? A machete? Yeah, don't let her get her hand on that. Oh, no. Oh, the gun. I didn't realize. I didn't drag her stinking ass up this goddamn mountain just for you to break her neck on the outskirts of town. I didn't give it to her. I give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't no goddamn <laughs> That might help her with her nose. Right, I'd make her clean up. I'd get tired of looking at it. I want to feel bad for her, but geez, she's terrible. There's another fella on foot up here on the road. Hey! What? You got to take him too. There's a blizzard. Yeah, but too many clowns will oversaturate the circus. Right, they might never get there with all these extracurricular people. 
A lot of fellas walking around, wouldn't you say, Major? <laughs> Seems to be a lot of them. This changes things, son. You really think I'm in cahoots with that fella or her? Put them on. Oh, I ain't, I ain't wearing no handcuffs. You put those on and you can stop worrying about this whole thing right now. <laughs> Son of a gun. And your weapons to the driver. If you say so, I do. Oh, this is gonna be the guy from Fallout, isn't it? The ghoul? Yeah, because he always walks like that. Mm -hmm. Is that him? OB, you got him? I got him. Walk over there where I can get a good look at you. You had to be tough as hell to work for Uber back then. <laughs> <laughs> He's out there in the conditions. Yeah, he's in a convertible. <laughs> Is that you, Chris Mannix? What? I'm sorry, friend. Do we know each other? You know this fellow? Only by reputation. I just want to ride. I'm, I'm freezing to death. Who is this joker? It's Erskine's youngest boy, Chris. You got business in Red Rock? Yes, I do. What? I'm the new sheriff. He crashed his car. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, once I get there, they swear me in. But th that ain't happened yet. <laughs> Who's that? Daisy Domergoo. Who the f is Daisy Domergoo? <laughs> Not a goddamn thing to nobody except me and that hangman. Well, I'll be double dog damn. <laughs> You're the hangman, Bob Ruth. My lord, is that really the real head of Major Marquess looking at me now? Yeah, it's really me and it's really my head. Uh, Y'all having a bounty hunter's picnic? <laughs> <laughs> the man in Red Rock's supposed to pay you is me. Oh. Well, excuse me for finding it hard to believe a town electing you to do anything except drop dead. So I'm supposed to freeze to death because you find something hard to believe? <laughs> <laughs> He's the best character so far. Yeah. Damn, he killed that. I know. <laughs> Guys, I just want to say, this is giving me re uh, Reservoir Dogs vibes. You know how, like, it all took place in the same environment, basically? Like, mm -hmm. in that little hideout, wherever they were, that basement or whatever? Same thing, they're just out in the snow. Like, this yeah. is brilliant. This is fun. I like that we're acquiring characters as yeah. we go. Picking them up. <laughs> well, I'll be. <laughs> nope. Then you'll freeze. Then you'll hang. Red Rock is my town now. And I'm gonna enter my town in Bounty Hunter's Chains. Sorry, Bushwhackers. I ain't entering Red Rock that way. <laughs> ain't nobody on my head, Bushwhacker. You let me die, <laughs> that's murder. Does he believe him? Hold out your hands. Would you believe him? I don't, I wouldn't trust that guy, dude. <laughs> I don't know why, I just don't. One thing I know for sure, this hating son of a gun ain't partnered up with you. I'll help you protect your 8,000. You help me protect my 10. Deal. <laughs> so they got an alliance, huh? I wonder if he's the sheriff. I wonder. We'll have to get there to know. I would just be thinking about, like, what are the odds? When we get to Red Rock, I'll buy you and Major Marquess there. Then and booze. I don't drink with rebel renegades, and I damn sure don't break bread with them. <laughs> Wrapped yourselves up in a rebel flag as an excuse to kill and steal. Sound to me you've been reading a lot of newspapers. <laughs> God damn it, Daisy. It's coming. It's gonna be turkey. <laughs> hey. Does he, <laughs> Does he know how famous you once was? Do I know about the $30,000 reward the Confederacy put on the head of Major Marquess? 30,000. Them peck of woods left their homes and families and come up this snowy mountain looking for me and fortune. Why'd they have a reward on you? Confederates took exception to my capacity for killing them. <laughs> Damn, so he killed all the people that came after him until his the south bounty went down? I guess so. As a personal front. What's uh, Wellenbeck? You ain't never heard of Wellenbeck Prison of War Camp, West Virginia. No, Rev, I ain't never heard of it. <laughs> Major Marquess did more than bust out. Major Marquess had a bright idea. He's a narrator. <laughs> I love the guy staring at there. He's like, well, come on, man. damn place <laughs> just made out of kindling. So I burnt it down. <laughs> 47 men burnt to a crisp. You joined the war to keep in chains. I joined the war to kill white southern crackers. When Major Marquess burned 47 men alive, that's when the South put a reward on the head of Major Marquess. And I made them trees, Mannix. See, once they started pulling out all them burnt bodies at Wellenbeck, seems not all them boys were revs. 
What in the final Yankee death count? Something like 37? That's the thing about war, Maddox. People die. So you gonna chalk it up to war's hell, huh? Horseshit! <laughs> I'll tell you what the cavalry didn't look kindly on. Mannix's marauders. And the fact that Erskine Mannix's little boy would talk about anybody else's behavior makes me want a horse laugh. Don't you say anything <laughs> about my daddy. Oh, just like I'm Reservoir Dogs. We were your brothers. How many towns did y'all sack in your fight for dignity and defeat? Oh, my fair share. Because when are scared, that's when white folks are safe. You gonna talk that hateful talk. You can ride up top with OB. No, 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 no. You done got me talking politics. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, this is like a little road trip that turns sour. Yeah. <laughs> Let this beautiful carriage rock me to sleep and dream about how lucky I am. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're all so good at killing, they done moved on, changed career paths. There's those open wounds from the past, huh? Yeah. Haberdashery? Mini's that's haberdashery? like a haberdashery. Haberdashery. That's like a uh, that's like an old time like like a gas station, like a visitor center. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like the Circle K. Get in there! Get in here! Get in there! Yeah, Ob's the best driver ever. <laughs> That's the bathroom? The house, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the heater. We weren't expecting another stage tonight. We are stuck on the wrong side of a blizzard. There's many in Sweet Dave. He says they ain't here. Who are you? I'm Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bob. <laughs> help OB with the horses. You need a dumb fuss. You need to help. I got two of my best men on it. <laughs> you heard him, freeloaders. Get to work. I mean, they didn't put up for the ride, so. Right. Earn it. Yeah, they're indebted right now. Kick it up on! Shut that door to the goddamn wizard out there. Close the door! <laughs> After that, you have to nail it shut! Ah, hold it shut! <laughs> you have to nail it shut! It's hammer nails! By the door! <laughs> Mr. Orange. <laughs> That would suck. <laughs> yeah, we are very lucky to live in the 21st century. Not just one piece of wood. <laughs> they know the trick. You have to use two. <laughs> He's going to hang her and she's still helping. <laughs> I think she's forced. <laughs> that door's a son of a gun. Who's the idiot who broke that? That Mexican fella? When did you fellas arrive? About 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Right, that's awful. <laughs> uh, I, I think we all felt the same way, but we're a little too polite to say something. You don't have that problem. <laughs> he just dumps it out. <laughs> all three of you fellas headed to Red Rock when the blizzard stopped you, huh? Yes. <laughs> that guy's a damn brute, isn't he? <laughs> New sheriff of Red Rock's traveling with us. He's a goddamn sheriff. I'm a monkey's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> but he still took him anyway. You never gave your name, sir. John Ruth. The hangman. You're a bounty hunter. That's right, Buster. <laughs> you have a warrant? Of course I do. May I see it? What's your name, Buster? Oswaldo Mowbray. Oswaldo? Yeah. <laughs> I got my warrant, Oswaldo. Would you be one of those? The warrant, the warrant? warrant? Yeah. Yeah, probably so. No, I'll he only wants to see it because it's a woman, though. <laughs> if it was a dude, he wouldn't care. Yeah, hey, take it to your Daisy Dolan again. Yeah, it's her. <laughs> it says here, dead or alive. Wouldn't transporting her be easier if she were dead? Well, no one said the job was supposed to be easy. Let's just say I don't like cheating a hangman. He got to make a living, too. <laughs> yeah, that's someone's job, probably. I'm Oswaldo Mowbray, the hangman in these parts. Him. <laughs> you ever spent two days or more locked up with one of your customers before? I can't say I have. Don't talk to my prisoner. I talk to my prisoner. That's it. You got it? I got it. <laughs> oh, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> so the hangman's like the prosecutor. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I'm having a lot of fun so far. Like, I feel like I'm here and I'm just hanging out like in a crazy ass time. But you know what? I have no idea what this movie's about so far. Right. Knowing Tarantino, they'll like burn this place down or something. So far, it's just a bunch of bounty hunters who don't really like each other. There's power dynamics. One prisoner who's a woman. <laughs> and the blizzard. And the best horse driver ever. We still got to feed these horses and take a squat from time to time. So me and Chris better lay out a line from the stable to the front door and from the front door to the shit house. So it don't get lost? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What do I think Because in that blizzard, you'll be out there and not be able to see. Right. Everything will be covered. Yeah, you'll get turned around. You're doing stable work in a goddamn blizzard. I offer to help you say no. <laughs> I mean, it's better than hanging out with hangmen. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to drop one every 10 paces. Do they have the tennis rackets on their feet? Heck no, they're out there in Justin boots. Why don't they just take more than one? That's what I was thinking. Take two! Maybe they're trying to work up an appetite for that stew. Maybe it sounds questionable. John Rich wants to take you back to Red Rock to stand trial for murder. And as the hangman, I will perform the execution. That's what civilized society calls justice. If the relatives that were outside that door, and after busting down that door, they hung you up by the neck, that would be frontier justice. The bad part is, it's apt to be wrong as right. In your case, you'd have it coming, but other people, <laughs> maybe not so much. Is he trying to explain why he's civilized and she's like an animal? Yeah. To me, it doesn't matter what you did. When I hang you, I'll get no satisfaction from your death. It's my job. He's the real hangman. The man You're the fake hangman. The lever that breaks your neck will be a dispassionate man. For justice delivered without dispassion is always in danger of not being justice. Yeah, it'd be like vengeance, right? Who's that quiet fella? You give me an Aragorn vibe, ain't <laughs> No. Just hanging out in the corner. Was oh, that Quentin? No offense, cowboy. That's the fella. bouncer of the strip club. Just getting your attention. He got bit by the black mamba. <laughs> Same hat. What you writing, friend? My life story. John Ruth. I'm bringing in this one to Red Rock to hang. Joe Gage. What? That's my name. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you going to Red Rock? I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't going to Red Rock. Where are you going? About nine miles outside of Red Rock. What's there? My mother. Listen, I'm just a cowpuncher. I just uh, got back from a long drive and figured I'd come home and spend time with my mother for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now that's funny. Because you don't look like the coming home for Christmas type. <laughs> Neither do you, buddy. I, I didn't want to say it, but... Looks can't be deceiving. Now, is that uh, good enough for you, John Root? For now. That's just a guy with a bone to pick, ain't it? <laughs> Look, he's gonna go heckle him. Yeah, what's up, old timer? Hello, old timer. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. General. Yeah, get it right. You, sir, are a hyena. Basically. I have no wish to speak to you. Fair enough, General. So that's all you gotta do. Is just stand up to him and I'll leave you alone. What? Kick, kick, it kick, it kick it over! Nail it shut. Here. They start bitching as soon as that door opens. <laughs> <laughs> Do you blame them though? It's a blizzard. There's a hammer and nails right there! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I gotta love this. I gotta love this part. <laughs> yeah. Really nail it! Well, you need two pieces of wood. You gotta hammer another one. <laughs> what ain't good enough? The god damn it! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that door's a whore. <laughs> oh, I get it, haberdashery. How's the coffee? Now, pretty good if I do say so myself. Cocky. <laughs> Did you see those shoes behind there? Mm -mm. The snowshoes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you need. You mean them giant tennis rackets? Yep. Ha! Ah, Navajo! <laughs> Guess who he is? The sheriff. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, 
I'm He's the hangman of Red Rock. I'm Chris Mannix. The new sheriff in Red Rock? Really? Or oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow warming himself by that pot billy stove is a hell of a driver named OB. Uh. <laughs> At least they give credit. <laughs> Do you have the execution on his own? In my bag. May I see him? Of course. That guy's like the Monopoly guy. Yeah, of course. Who's, uh, who's Lance Lawson? He's the fella who shot the fella who was sheriff for me. Mm. Precisely. He might not be lying about that. Yeah. A little snake bite in your coffee. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> who the trap with the Lincoln letter? The Lincoln what? <laughs> Why don't you pen pal with the president? <laughs> I heard that somebody had a letter from Abraham Lincoln. I assumed it was you. Not him. The Abraham Lincoln. Many a sweet day been there. Many a sweet day went to visit her mother on the north side of the mountain. Never knew many had a mother. Don't we all? <laughs> and she left you in charge. Say, are you calling me a liar? Uh-oh. Well, not yet, eh? Just sounds peculiar, though. What well, sounds peculiar? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Sweet Dave lifting his fat ass out of his chair long enough to fetch well water unless Minnie was laying a frying pan upside his head. Well, that sounds a whole lot like you're calling me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Minnie still serve food? Do you consider it stew food? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then we serve food. <laughs> Minnie doesn't smoke a pipe. She rolls her own red apple tobacco. Red apple. Big Kahuna burger. Do you know any more? Isn't there like a coffee brand or something? No. Yes, I can't wait for them to have to nail the door shut. Ha ha. You know, that'd be a really crazy life. We're lucky. We live in Georgia. Our weather's really mild. It's It'd just be hard to hell. just walk outside. Like, what the heck? That would be a task. Imagine waking up at three in the morning and having to pee. Holding it. Well, I mean, I'd just be outside, but you know what I'm saying. Well, cut my legs off and call me shorty. Is that General Sanford Smithers I see? <laughs> General Sandy don't give a damn Smithers? Uh, <laughs> Captain Chris Mannix, Mannix Marauders. This is a small world out here. <laughs> May I sit down, sir? According to the Yankees, it's a free country. <laughs> War stories. Oh boy, did my daddy talk about you? And yes, guys, we know that's the Confederacy and all that. Like we were, you know, people are just gonna assume we don't know that on YouTube. I never knew your father, son, but I always respected his resolve. Your respect would have meant the world to him. Well, how about a blanket? <laughs> That'd be even nicer. Hell, you know what? You can have mine. Damn, he's a big fan, ain't he? General don't give a damn. <laughs> so what brings you out Wyoming way, sir? My boy, he died out here a few years back. He came out here to the hills of Wyoming to make his fortune. Never to be heard from again. I bought him a symbolic plot in the Red Rock Cemetery. And I'm here to advise the stonemaker on his headstone. No chance he could be living a cold life out in the woods. If he'd have done what he came out here to do, he'd have come home. Hmm. Closer, closer! You have to hold it close while I nearly shot! <laughs> Didn't they blame him for breaking he, the door? Yeah. <laughs> Orderly, cover <come> on! <laughs> hold it close! Bob knows what's up. They don't even have to yell at him. Boy, he's mad as hell looking at him. <laughs> we need two pieces of wood! A lot of hats in your Bob. <laughs> Considering Minnie's no hats and doors policy. I have a laser fair attitude about the hats. I'll make tomorrow another day. <laughs> Where do you think the owners are for real? I know, because he's not obeying the rules. He's on his ass, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they're not in that stew. Has Tarantino done a horror movie? Well, I think uh, Death Proof was considered, yeah. You know my daddy. That was more of a chick flick. <laughs> The army of Northern Virginia would have been used in a very different way. I said the army of North Virginia would have been used in a very different way. What does he see with the red jelly bean? Do you know that, sir? I don't know that, but I know he's a and that's all I need to know. Damn. Y'all sort of seem alike. General Sanford Smithers? Battle of Baton Rouge? Were they on opposite sides? Yeah, probably. Inform the in the cavalry officer's uniform that I had a division of Confederates under my command 
General Smithers wishes me to inform you. I heard him, Hill Billy. Inform this old cracker that I was in Baton Rouge also on the other side. <laughs> he said that he was also in Baton Rouge. Like he can't hear. <laughs> you captured a whole colored command that day. We didn't have the time or the food to care for northern horses. Northern. So we shot them where they stood. Gentlemen. If you shoot this unarmed old man, I guarantee I will hang you by the neck until you are dead. So this is like the John Wick place. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're not allowed to use guns. Oh, yeah. I got the hotel. Since we may be trapped here, may I suggest we divide minis in half. <laughs> the northern side and the southern side. With the dinner table operating as a neutral territory. <laughs> We could say that the fireplace acts as a, a symbolic representative of Georgia. So the South gets the fireplace? While the bar oh, damn, represents... Oh, that's our choice, right? Which way you want to stay warm? <laughs> Philadelphia! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he like a British dude or something? I agree. One of them fellas is not what he says he is. One of them. Maybe even two of them is here to see Domergu goes free. Whoa. All they got to do is wait for a window of opportunity. If you say so, John. <laughs> Waiting for an opportunity and knowing it's the right one isn't so easy. You think it's him? You think he killed the owners? Maybe. He's absolutely right. <laughs> we're just waiting for everybody to go to sleep. That's what we're going to do. Kill you. She's gonna get punched again. But how do we know she's not lying? This here is Daisy Domergu. She's wanted dead or alive for murder. Ten thousand dollars. I'm taking this woman into Red Rock to hang. <laughs> is there anybody here committed to stopping me from doing that? It could be old boy going to go see his mama. Right. He's never a good guy. Right. <laughs> you are right about that. It could be the prosecutor. Because he was bad in Reservoir Dogs, too. Nobody got a problem with this. I can't just take your word. Circumstances force me to take precautions. When you say precautions, <laughs> why do I feel you mean me? Because I'm going to take your gun, son. You are. Why don't they all gang up and take your gun? I know. Why don't he just go to Philadelphia and shut up? Like minus the blizzard, but yeah. Oh, I still got mine. I'll protect you. A bastard's work is never done. <laughs> Hi, John Ruth. If you want it, you're going to have to have a tape. Calm down. <laughs> Take your hand away from your gun. Blink if you're calm. He blinked. <laughs> he blinked. Take his pistol. Dang. I'm real sorry about this, son. He didn't want to go see mama with a cut on his neck. Dang, you would have went for him too, because you immediately thought him. Yeah, look how rebellious he looks over there. <laughs> Pretty sneaky. He's going he to Georgia. To, he had to go sulk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. He went south, didn't he? <laughs> Afraid the same applies to you too, mister. Uh, precautions must be taken because life is too sweet to lose. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to take his gun. He's too nice. I don't trust him. He's got such a slick tongue. There's something weird about him. That's the gun bucket. OB, go to the outhouse. Take this bucket and dump it down the shithole. Why do I got to go outside? <laughs> well, your jacket's already on and I sort of kind of trust you. He didn't get paid for all that. They're going to dump their gun in the outhouse? Hell no. You think if you sell that gun, you ever disclose that? No. You definitely don't tell anybody about that. Damn, that was good, don't it? It's just the noise for me. I'm just kind of like... <laughs> I'm gonna cut you loose while we eat. <laughs> what if they become like friends? Do you think she'll ever forgive him? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he spares her. She's a killer. She might shoot his ass. I suppose this blizzard 
The council's a stroke of luck, as far as you're concerned. You don't hear me complain, do you? Well, how about you, Oswaldo? <laughs> <laughs> don't you feel just the least little bad about hanging a woman? Well, until they invent a trigger a woman can't pull, if you're a hangman, you're going to hang women. You really only need to hang mean bastards. But mean bastards, you need to hang. Uh -huh. Oh. Is Bob, I mean, Obi. <laughs> I ain't ever going out in that shit! <laughs> He's hurt. <laughs> It's like they're not emotional at all, but at the same time, they're extremely emotional. It's weird. You okay, OB? I'm fine. <laughs> you want some stool, OB? Stool, later. <laughs> Poor OB. <laughs> this is the all sarcast right here. How you doing, Black Major? I ain't in the mood, Chris Manning. Leave me be from your hot shit. <laughs> and they're in the neutral zone, so chill. You got a letter from Abraham Lincoln? Yes. He don't like Abraham Lincoln, does he? The President of the United States? Yes. Of America? Yes. May I say it? No, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> but the way John tells it, y'all was practically pen pals. Yes. And a pen pal's practically a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you really think a was practically friends with the president of the United States of America. Probably as much as he thinks he's about to be sheriff, you know? Right. It's probably the same. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's not even a hangman? What if everyone's lying about who they are? All that horseshit? <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> oh, it was? Nah, I think he's telling the truth. <laughs> She's hell, boy. <laughs> Can't trust a f***ing word comes out of your mouth. I hurt your feelings. As a matter of fact, you did. The only time black folks are safe is when white folks is disarmed. And this letter had the desired effect of disarming white folks. I call it a dirty trick. You want to know why I lie about something like that, white man? Got me on that stage, coach, didn't it? A letter from Abraham Lincoln wouldn't have had that kind of effect on me. I'll spit on it. <laughs> she got slapped out the damn buggy for it, too. Yeah. <laughs> you leave that old man alone. Stand down, you son of a bitch. I shared a battlefield with this man. Or would you deny me that, too? I suppose you were there. May I join you? Yes, you may. Hell yeah, boys. Some civility in here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Better than me. How's life since the war? Got both my legs. I can't complain. Got a woman? Fever took her start of this last winter. Mm. What was her name? Betsy. Georgia gal? Augusta. <laughs> hey, boy, I come up here a few years back. Oh, you're a regular. Oh, you knew my boy. He killed him. <gasps> yeah, um. I knew him. Did you know my son? I know the day he died. You want to know what day that was? Yes. The day he met me. Ooh. <laughs> that guy's like... <laughs> <laughs> Silent night. <laughs> He just armed him. He come up here to do a little head hunt. So them Johnnies climb this mountain looking for fortune. Oh, you notice there's a chess table? Mm -hmm. It was me. Oh, he's playing chess right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you just let me go home to my family, I swear I'll never set foot in Wyoming again. Begging for his life, your boy told me his whole life story. <laughs> and you was in that story, General. General Smithers, don't you listen to him? He didn't know your boy. 
It was cold the day I killed your boy. I made him strip right down to his bass. Then I told him to start walking. Dang, that would suck. How far do they have to walk? I don't know. They've been walking for a minute, though. I walked his naked ass for two hours before the cold collapsed. Then he commenced to begging again. All he wanted was a blanket. You'd be surprised what a man that cold would do for a blanket. I pulled my big black pecker and I made him crawl through the snow on all foes over to it. I hope you didn't do that. <laughs> That'd be a little weird. And I stuck my big black Johnson right down his goddamn throat. I don't want to believe this story. And Chester sucked on that warm black dingus for long as he could. <laughs> he's kind of, <laughs> kind of sus, bro. I'm sure he's exaggerating this story, right? You starting to see pictures, ain't you? I thought he was trying to get him to shoot him or something. Right. I never did give your boy that blanket. And he did everything I asked. So what you gonna do, old man? The dumbest thing your boy ever did was to let me know he was your boy. Damn, I feel like that was dumb. Like he could have did all that just to get him to shoot him? Well, I feel like if you want to shoot him that bad, just let him have his spill and then let him forget about it. He ain't as quick as he used to be. Tom has got a secret. She's been had a secret. Everyone's got a secret in this place. About 15 minutes has passed since we last left our characters. Joe Gage volunteered to take Smithers' dead body outside. Straws were drawn to see who'd help him. Obi lost. <laughs> of course he didn't. Chris, John Ruth, and Oswaldo had a vigorous debate about the legality of the self-defense murder that just transpired. Captain Chris Mannix donned the dead general's coat and joined Oswaldo in lighting the candles and lanterns. <laughs> he don't seem too shook up about it. He just met his hero. Bob enjoyed a manzana roja. Red apple. <laughs> Dom Ragu hasn't moved from her spot at the community dinner table since John Ruth uncuffed her. Fifteen minutes ago, Major Warren shot General Smithers in front of everybody. But about 40 seconds before that, somebody poisoned the coffee. Oh, damn. That looked like the hands of the hangman. You think so? And the only Maybe. one to see him do it. This guy shot. Oh, no, it's her. Was Dom Ragu. John Ruth. Can I play that guitar over there? <laughs> yeah. Why not? He's like, maybe she'll sound like Loretta Lynn. Whoever that is. <laughs> How'd she see that? Well, she's been in there for hours, just <laughs> sitting there looking. What's that song Jenny from Forrest Gump was singing? <laughs> I don't remember it, but. They call him a man. <laughs> she was living her dreams. <laughs> <laughs> What if she says it in the song, who, who poisoned the coffee? I'd rather drown in misery than come to <laughs> To be honest, she seems a lot nicer than I thought she would. No! So it's not them two. Regret they sent Jim Jones in chains to Bobney. Jim Jones. <laughs> Drinking the Kool-Aid, you know? Oh, yeah. She's kind of pretty. Got another verse to it? Yeah, I Go ahead, sing it. <laughs> Whatever you say, John. She's like, LOL. You'll be dead, John, when I get to Mexico. I was waiting on a slap. <laughs> Give me that guitar. He's centering her. Music time's over. What? Hey, whoa. He didn't like that bar, did no. he? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she don't want to be chained to a dead man. <laughs> we only know it's poison because he said so, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be honest, it's a really nice cabin. Uh oh. But he was about to drink it. Oh, man. 
But he likes that girl, though. They get along. When you get to hell, John, tell him Daisy sent you. Who was that? He's got a gun right beside him. He's like, oh, hell no. Don't throw up on her. He did knock her front teeth out. He said he was going to do it. Oh, oh. oh, this is turning into death proof. Oh, they should have had me in this movie because I throw up horribly when I throw up. I'm the worst. Oh, my God. Don't test me, bitch. <laughs> so it wasn't him because he was talking. Oh, God damn it. I'm good. Didn't get. <laughs> you too, Senor Bob. He's like, man. He's like, hey, come on, Senor. <laughs> hey, I did nothing, Senor. Move him down, snowshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Move a little sudden, a little strange, you're going to get a bullet. Let me hear you say, I got it. I got it. I got oh, it. Go ahead. We have it. <laughs> okay, who do you have your money on? Who did it? I still think it was um, Mr. Orange. I think it's Hattori Hanzo. The one who sold his for like 300 bucks. Two Ds, yeah. bud. Anybody does anything, you kill them. You finally decided I'm telling the truth about being the sheriff of Red Rock, huh? I know you ain't the killer poison that coffee because you almost drunk it your own damn self. <laughs> True. Give me the key. Give me the key. <laughs> She's just pouting. She's like, You're gonna die on this mountain and I'm gonna live when you do. <laughs> you just killed the only man here committed to getting you to Red Rock alive. Well, that's not true, is it? And one of y'all is working with her. Yeah, but I guess they're not trying to get her to Red Rock. Uh, all y'all is. But only one of you poisoned the coffee. But John Roos trying to hang your woman. So you kill him. But OB. Wasn't hanging nobody. He damn sure wasn't. <laughs> it's just like any one of us would have drunk that coffee. Like me, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> he was close, buddy. <laughs> Think about how it could have been you rolling around here on this floor. And I know who I got my money on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, Joe Gage. I'm looking at you. <laughs> this is like Clue. Yeah. Who made the coffee? He did. Yeah, he did. But it's the stew. It's got me thinking. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, what did they eat? My mama used to make stew. And it always tasted the same, no matter the meat. Uncle Charlie, he made stew too. It always tasted like Uncle Charlie's stew. He's a connoisseur. <laughs> that damn show is Minnie's stew. How'd she make the stew this morning? Hmm. Maybe she just left. This it's Sweet Day's chair. Nobody sits in Sweet Day's chair. <laughs> Old guys are like that about their recliners. If he went to the north side, this chair be going with him. <gasps> What's in the chair? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know, Sweet brother. Sweet Day's goddamn blood. <laughs> <laughs> are you calling him a liar now? <laughs> Way I see it, Senor Bob, if it's you, that means Minnie and her man, they laying out back there dead somewhere. Or we go by my theory, which is the ugliest guy did it. <laughs> He's like, dang. I was sitting on that side of the room playing Silent Night on the piano. Oh, true. Oh, I ain't say you poisoned the coffee. I said you didn't make the stew. You working with the man who poisoned the coffee. Y'all intended the bushwhack John Root and Free Daisy. You didn't count on the two of us. Hmm. <laughs> Partners. Do you intend to murder me based on a far-fetched theory? Or can you prove it, cabron? <laughs> if you'd have been here two and a half years ago, you'd know about that sign used to hang up over the bar. You want to know what that sign says in your bar? No dogs or Mexicans allowed. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Dang, she changed the rules, obviously. Or either he ain't who he says he is. Right. And it hung over that bar every day till she took it down a little over two years ago. You know why she took it down? She started letting in dogs. <laughs> oh. 
So oh. basically, she wouldn't hire you. That means she's in heaven. But when you tell me Minnie Mink took the haberdashery and left it in the hands of a goddamn Mexican. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I am calling you a liar, Senor Bob. And if you lying, then you killed Minnie. And two days. Hey, I'm going to just assume that he's right. Yeah. Damn, Bob, I trusted you. He got the evidence, apparently. Where was Amigos, Bob? He's a detective. And there goes Senior Bob. This reminds me of Pulp Fiction with a Ezekiel 4517 or something. Yeah. And it reminds me of Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, that too. Like, who's the rat? But in that one, it was like, who's a good guy? I'm going to pour this whole pot of coffee down that bitch's goddamn throat. It was me. I poisoned the coffee. I knew it. So I was right. <laughs> Say adios to your huevos. Oh my god. There was someone under there? You were right. They were all in on it. What if it's like the owners uh, under there? Yeah, they're probably dead. What if they just brought all these people to shoot each other off? Oh, this is a what are you saying? What if the owners are under there because it was her Sue, she made it that morning. What if they brought them there to claim all the bounties? Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good theory. <laughs> but that'd be risky though, I don't think so. <laughs> the four passengers. This is like pre-blizzard times, obviously. They said it earlier that morning. That would be tiring after running that, if you're a horse. I bet the horses get happy as hell when they buy more horses. You think they used to pick on people like, you only got four horses, bro, shut up. Yeah, they probably do in the Amish world. Yeah. How many you got? Full house today, friend. Minnie wants him out of here. Well, I can't give him a seat I don't have. She was on death roof. Mm -hmm. Here we are, everybody. Minnie's haberdashery. Sleep on inside, get warm by the fire, get some coffee in you. I'm surprised you didn't get on the front of the buggy like. I know. She's so <laughs> pleasant, though. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch Death Proof. Yeah. She's a wild bitch in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. The Deadly Bopper Gang. I thought it would be some nice people because of how sweet she was when she was talking to him, like a tour guide. Hi! Everybody, this is Minnie. Now, the fella in the uniform, I don't know, but the one he's playing chess with is Sweet Dave. Hiya, Dave. Hey, Judy. Oswald and Mowbray, man. Oh, his accent was different. Bob, and I'm Jody. <laughs> oh, Judy says something about the best coffee in the world. You don't need to sell it, Minnie. You need to make it. And you need to get your ass out there and help Charlie with them bags and get Ed in here. And she was on the Django. She wants to talk to you. <laughs> Charlie, you got a hold of these fellas? Got them, Ed. Would you roll me a cigarette? Sure, honey. You play? I must have had at least 12 people teach me that goddamn game. <laughs> Just never could keep the moves in my head. Merci beaucoup, mademoiselle Minnie. Oh, that's real nice. What is that? That's French. You speak French? Oui. Oui, well, what does that mean? It means yes. Hi, hi, Dave. Ask me if my ass is fat. What? <laughs> Ask me if my ass is fat. Just do it. Is your ass fat? We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we saw that chicken plucked. Uh, are you the uh, jelly bean salesman around here? <laughs> How many peppermint sticks I get for a nickel? Five. <laughs> Remember he saw the one jelly bean on the ground? Mm -hmm. This is where it's going to pop off. Ah, for a nickel ain't bad. Good deal. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing in your bag in case anybody wants to change your clothes before Red Rock. Have been sick. Thanks. So why do they call you Six Horse Judy anyway? Because I'm the only Judy you've ever seen that can drive a six horse team. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, she is so dead. <laughs> You got a very sweet little accent. Where's that from? England? I take exception to that. <laughs> New Zealand. He's practicing. 
This music's familiar. Like he's used it in oh, another God. movie. Mm -hmm. Coffee's ready. Well, it's about damn time. Well, what do you think? That's how they broke the door. Oh. Uh. Bob seems so nice, too. No podemos confiar en este viejo pitor. Claro que podemos, hombre. He has something. Not much, but something. Well, I must admit, it does make the setup more convincing. Dang, so he saw all that go down. He just kept his mouth shut. Do we collect the bodies and chuck them in that well out there? I mean, I'm pretty impressed they got all that blood up, though. There's gotta be a whale barrel around here somewhere. What a waste. He paid a whole nickel for that. At least if you join that gang, you know you got you know that they got your back. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't tell who it was under the floorboard though. I think it was Channing Tatum's character, was it not? He's the only one who I wasn't couldn't up tell there. if it was a guy or a girl, honestly. I, I thought it might have been the Australian girl. I had nothing to do with it. If you was a cat, what just happened here would count as one of your nine lives. You might have a way out of this yet. Later today, son of a gun is going to come in here and he's going to have my sister with him. Oh, that's uh... his sister. That makes sense. I'm taking her to Red Rock to be hung. Well, damn, she kind of deserves it. They're a ruthless gang. Cold blooded. Right. And when he gets here, I'm going to kill that fella and turn my sister loose. Do you have any reason why you would want to interfere with me saving my sister from a hangman's rope? Mm. That's the same thing he asked everybody. Yeah. I mean, we did just kill Minnie and Sweet Dave. I just met these people. I don't give a damn about them or you or your sister. That is a good answer, old man. Now, when they get here, you just sit your ass in this chair and you don't do nothing. Hello. Thank you. Good night. Maybe your name, but that's it. Be an old man. Go to sleep. <laughs> and don't you say nothing. That's how they was talking to Joe Biden. I'll kill him. Free my sister. And leave you be. Deal? Deal. He almost says nothing Thank until you. like the end. <laughs> yeah, except he managed During to the get next himself four shot. <laughs> Jody and the boys chucked the bodies down the well. Tidied up around minis. <laughs> Stash weapons for further use and waited for John Ruth and Daisy stage to arrive. Damn, what an ambush. What a calculated plan though. That's crazy. Let's get ready. Dang, a secret hatch. We are still gonna be facing John Ruth. So the name of the game here is patience. If my sister don't make it off of this mountain alive, neither do you. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. That's crazy as hell. So he's just playing the long game down there waiting. Yeah. He's down there freezing his ass off. And they're about to be the best actors you've ever seen. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Oh, I think it's funny that it's from this side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like hilarious, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Full circle right there. <laughs> they started this door drama. Yeah. Like you're stuck with us. <laughs> He saw all of it go down, boy. So that old man's like a hostage in there, basically. I mean, he's playing along, though, but... So is he. He was good. He really didn't look like a go-see-mama type, did he? <laughs> like he put some peanuts on it. Open up! You have to kick it over! What? <laughs> kick it over! <laughs> oh. 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 Who's boot scooting? Yeah, that guy hit the boot scooting boogie, didn't he? How you doing, old boy? Oh, they shot my nuts off. <laughs> I'm freezing, bleeding like a stuck pig. I think I'm gonna die. How you doing? My leg hurts really bad. I was just being sarcastic. I don't give a f 
about your leg. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of dress the same. They got to team up now. Do you think so? I mean, it's them against them. Fella in the basement, you either give up by the time I count to three, or I shoot Damagu in the head. No, 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 don't shoot him in the head. What if he has a gun? Well, he does. He just shot him in the nuts. Now throw out your pistol. <laughs> what if he has another one? <laughs> now throw out your other pistol. I ain't got another pistol. Well, you better shoot another pistol at your ass. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now throw up your shotgun. <laughs> Slowly come on up. Molasses style. Then they make a good team, don't they? <laughs> How are you doing, dummy? Better. Now I see your ugly face. I wouldn't be surprised if they just shot her right now. I know. Oh. How you like that? What are you doing? He was getting up. It took him too long, so I've done it for him. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting that, but I didn't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Why are you screaming for her? That's what y'all do to people. You should have expected that. I'm sorry, honey. Oh. May I sit in a chair? Yes, you may. She's still chained to him. Oh my god. I mean, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? Don't you see that John Ruth put you smack dab in the middle of danger? We're all gang members. The Jody Domingue gang. Oh, damn. That fella y'all just killed in the basement was Jody Domingue, my brother. Oh. That was his gang. He was a big bad cat worth $50,000. Y'all rich. Every member of his gang was worth at least 10. Jody's got 15 men waiting at Red Rock. We couldn't kill John Ruth and free Daisy here. Their job was to sack the town and free Daisy there. And Chris, I'm telling you, you ain't done anything yet mm -mm. that we can't forgive. Nah. Bop. I'm kind of curious about her sales pitch. <laughs> Humor me. That man's tough, though. I'd be crying if my things got shot off. Mm -hmm. What's your deal? She then dead. When the snow melts, we go to Mexico, you go on to Red Rock, get that star pinned on your chest. We could give him Mark, huh? He's worth $12,000. That's Marco the Mexican? <laughs> That's why he was all wrapped up, so you couldn't see him? Yeah. Now that him blowed his face off, Marco ain't worth a peso. <laughs> 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 you can have me. I got a federal bounty of $15,000 on my head. <laughs> Now they're comparing bounties. <laughs> Joe Gay, who you be? Grouch Douglas. <laughs> Grouch. <laughs> he worked 10 just like Daisy. So he's he's in there on like the trader's block checking yeah. these prices. <laughs> oh, you can kill us all. But you'll never spend a cent of that bounty money. Because when that snow melts, the rest of Jody's gang are coming here. You ain't going to be able to get away with any more than say one body per horse. And with all them horses in that snow, and you all by your lonesome, you're gonna be a my bogey. <laughs> Shoot that dead! <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ! Oh, 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 you believe in Jesus now, huh, bitch? <laughs> Anybody else wanna make a deal? Huh? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Oh, 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 you believe in Jesus now, huh, bitch? <laughs> you ain't done nothing we can't forgive. You shoot him dead, take my body, sit out of snow with Daisy and Grace. Oh, he got it, he got it, he got it. Oh, he's about to hit him with that. No, he's not. Uh-oh. This is long coming right here. Ah, uh, of course. Oh, it jammed on him. Or he's out of bullets. Yeah, he's out of bullets. Give me my pistol. What you gonna do? Get him! He's got a decision to make, don't he? Give Man, me a Man, shoot assist. that girl. You were saying. <sighs> you leave here, meet up with your gang, and hightail it to Mexico. I get Oswaldo, 
and Joe Gage. Yeah. You gonna make deal? Yeah, that's a deal with the devil. Diabolical bitch. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> We're taking Joe's body back with us. He got children. He's gonna shoot her. He has to. Right. Come on. When our boys get here in a couple of days, they're gonna cut your nuts off. Well, I guess I should be plumb scared right now, huh? <laughs> if you had any brains, you would be. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing good, though. I yeah, like her she's too. a good actress. Yeah. In order for me to be scared of your threats, I got to believe in those 15 extra gang members. Damn, he called the bluff, didn't he? Yeah. What I believe is Joe Gage poisoned the coffee. And he almost drank it. You watched me pour a cup and you didn't say <laughs> shit. Yeah, he don't forget about that, huh? You are what you've always been. A lying bitch. <laughs> when it comes to what's left of the Jody Doming Gray gang, I'm looking at him. <laughs> My brother leads an army. Horse shit! <laughs> My daddy led an army. I don't feel so good. Oh no! Oh, shit. She could crawl to the gun. Oh damn! You need to pick up what's left of them nuts and get to scooting over there. They just became friends, kinda. Maddox. Maddox is a good actor. The guy who plays him. I mean, they all are, obviously. I see why it was like iconic for Ghoul to play like in yeah. cause Fallout's kinda western. I can't wait to get back into that just because I love this character so much more now. Damn. <laughs> That's that stew she was eating. <laughs> These to make it different. There's more hands on. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> I may have misjudged you. <laughs> no, no, don't shoot her. Why the hell not? John Ruth. <laughs> what was that sound for me? The last thing that bastard did before he died was save your life. We're going to die, white boy. But there is one thing left we do have a say in. And that's how we kill this bitch. <laughs> John Roof was the hangman. Miss you, John Roof. <laughs> when the hangman catches you, you hang. They're gonna hang her. But how? They can't even walk. Man, they'll find a way. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> probably like, you right. <laughs> 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 I want to be sad for her, but she kind of Nah, sucks. she deserves that. She deserves every bit of that. That's a sheriff, a red rock. <laughs> I sent it to you, Domagoo, to hang by the neck until death. I want to watch. Did you see his arm dangling? Oh my gosh. At least they can bond over something, though, I guess. Yeah. Who would have thought a white man and a black man hanging a white woman together <laughs> as one final act. Now that was a nice dance. That sure was pretty. <sighs> I mean, I guess at the end of the day, they're both men of the law. If they make it out, they could literally be so rich, though. What's that sound? Hey. <laughs> Can I see that Lincoln letter? Oh. You still remember that right now? I'm glad we finally get to see it, hopefully. Dear Marquess, I hope this letter finds you in good health. There's just so much to do. Times are changing slowly. He memorized it. That'd be a crazy letter. Your military success. That's historical for sure is a credit not only to you but your race as well we still have a long way to go 
I know we'll get there. Hopefully, our paths will cross in the future. Oh, Mary Todd's calling. <laughs> so I guess it must be time for bed. Respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. So many people were lying, but not him. That was a lie. That's fake. Yes. That's a nice touch. Yeah. Sorry, I was thinking, because like, I mean, I get that he wrote the letter as like a fake letter just to keep his like neck on his shoulders. But I thought that the big twist was in the end. It was true. No, no. I mean, he, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to. But wrong, I think it but was, was really it, cool how he wrote that letter. Um, we can talk about it at the end. Yeah. Listen, all you people, you may Damn. be a soldier. That was a great movie. I had a lot of fun with it. What did you think about it? I thought it was very good. I, I actually like what I was just going to say about that letter. I don't know what kind of letter I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting like, I don't know, a letter about like unity, I guess you could say. I wasn't expecting that at all. He was trying to fake it to sound like uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, right, for sure. But that was crazy. But um, I thought this was a good movie from start to finish, like just two hours of fun. I guess you can kind of say it was kind of murder mystery esque. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like Clue or something. Yeah. It reminded me of a video game, like a little like, like yeah. a computer game, like a, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it really did feel like, like these video games that you put on sometimes. Yeah, you watch. have to like find the clues and figure out who the killer was. It, it's cool. It reminded me of Reservoir Dogs, except in Reservoir Dogs, like obviously a cop was infiltrating a gang, but in this one, it was basically a gang infiltrating, like owning this place or something. And it was just, it was basically just a spin on that, but I kind of like this one better. It was like done. Kind of the same way, but as a like on a much larger scale. Yeah, that makes sense. So, well, kind of larger because. But the thing about it was, was it's kind of larger, but not because um, Samuel L. Jackson knew of everybody in there. It seemed like a big world, but it wasn't. It was like a little small bounty hunter. Yeah, it was really just coincidental, it. and it was almost like it was like destined to happen or something. The way all these people just randomly found each other, especially right before a storm. I really like it because I thought in Reservoir Dogs it was really fun because I was explaining in that movie how just hanging out in the same area made the story really have to focus on like dialogue and stuff. Yeah. And man, we got more of that in this one, which I loved. Uh, this one really did feel like Reservoir Dogs to me in that way. It feels like his chance to like remake that movie because that was his first movie. Yeah, made, with like so. a Western take and like right. he had similar characters in it as well. Right. And yeah. it basically is just a story of a bunch of bounty hunters and uh, there was bringing this girl in because she needed to face justice essentially and the gang infiltrated killed a bunch of innocent people pretended that they were watching over the i forget the word but i've heard that word before yeah something like that yeah. and um it turns out the whole time there were a bunch of rats and <laughs> yeah. luckily our main character knew all that and just put the mystery together saved the day so i really many. like when when um quentin tarantino brings these characters in this one especially but like I would even say in Inglorious Bastards and others, he has it where the characters will tell the story and you kind of aren't sure if they're telling the truth or not. And it's something like we have to continuously guess. Like, did Samuel L. Jackson actually do to that that to that guy's son? Um, is that guy actually going to be the sheriff? Was he supposed to be? Like, those are all questions that never were confirmed. A lot of that was up for interpretation. Yeah. Well, that's why I was saying about the letter, because you didn't get too much backstory on him. I know that originally there was a bounty on his head because he kept killing confederate soldiers and every single one that came up to him the more he like killed them off the you know less his but if he was that good at killing people especially on that side then maybe it wouldn't be too far out of the realm of possibility that he would pin pal with abraham lincoln i mean i know that sounds dumb but i mean i don't know you know what i'm saying it's a crazy movie man i really did enjoy it i just thought the dialogue in this one was hilarious i thought samuel L. jackson did it again he's always the best character yeah in these maybe it's just like the era maybe it's just the old like dixie era or something he just he does such a good job portraying like someone from that time like just the accent the way he talks the broken english like everything's just so perfect when it comes to same well he's just roles. good on any like time frame like i'll put it this way i sorry to interrupt you i know why he got that role in marvel now yeah you know what i mean uh because i mean that franchise was one of those type of franchises where every movie for a long for a huge run was grossing like a billion dollars so they really brought in the superstars man so at the time, I didn't really understand that much about Samuel L. Jackson. Like, right. I, I knew who he was. He's tired of all those motherfucking snakes on these motherfucking <laughs> planes. But I never realized he was such an iconic character that just played so many awesome. Especially in this, in Quentin Tarantino's world. Right. He's a huge character. And I've mentioned it before, but just piggybacking off that. It's just crazy how Quentin Tarantino found like this perfect cast of characters. And it's changed a little bit and evolved, but... He's really stuck with them. Right. I love when he brings them back. It so. makes me excited. Like, I feel like I kind of know him. 
Because in Quentin Tarantino's movies, we hang out with the people. We get to know them. Right. And it's kind of cool when you get to see that person that you kind of hung out with and know in like a different role. Kurt Russell is a good example in this one. We know him as Stuntman Mike and Ego, of course. But it was cool to see him in this as the hangman, too, because the hangman was kind of a legend. Yeah, he and, was. And they put the legend down really easily and <laughs> quick. The guy who plays the ghoul, though, I can't remember. Walton name. Coggins, I believe. Walton Coggins. So when we were watching Fallout on our channel, like that guy was slightly familiar to me, I guess. But I had zero idea he was like as, an as icon. cool as he is. Yeah, like, he's yeah, a legend, cool. man. So I'll look back on that franchise now in season two and definitely appreciate it more. Yeah, for sure. Because sure. he's honestly, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but if you like a Western take, Maybe the Fallout wouldn't necessarily be for you, but it's unique. And I think Walton Coggins does a fantastic job playing like the anti hero in it. Yeah, he really does. Yeah. But I also like him, and I know he's the anti hero in uh, Fallout, but I like him in the role of like when he's just the Americana cowboy, black and white morals you know what i mean i feel like he's he started selling and all out the, the things show, we've seen him in he's western so that's why i'm kind of associating him with like a western like maybe that's why they picked him as ghoul yeah i mean he'd be kind of weird if he was trying to play like a wall street guy you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean <laughs> um, but let us know guys while we're on walton coggins because we do like his character we like his acting what's your favorite walton coggins movie or portrayal whatever right maybe this one for so far for me it'll be this one and i really do like him as the ghoul he does a fantastic job pretty straight up movie man just a uh slow burn of a movie just a lot of character development getting to know these characters especially like in the context of their time and stuff and i just thought it was great in the end how uh, walter coggins the guy who plays him and samuel L. jackson's character they really came together and i guess united on this idea that you know we might not always agree we might be on different sides politically and to be honest the civil war was a lot more than just being on different sides politically. Yeah. i mean it was a lot of hatred involved in that mm -hmm. but ultimately before they died they were able to put aside their petty differences and just i guess like stand up for the wall like yeah. stand up for you know like the get order. rid of so, get rid of someone who's just really terrible it's almost like they were both on the opposite sides of the war but at the same time there was a level of honor and respect that went yeah. along with it and he, even if you don't agree with the side you know you know he just respected the uniform i guess so whatever that means and then when these outlaws were disrespecting the uniform and you know being outlaws that just didn't sit right with either of them yeah so i mean i love that part i love the unity in the end so i even love movie. the little touches that tarantino does where for example like bounties are always wanted dead or alive i like how we saw the side of you know i don't want the drama of dealing with like runaways so i'm gonna bring them in dead and the other one's like well i like to watch them hang i like the justice like i just thought that was interesting that was an interesting just little like portrayal of like the western times and because you got to see both sides i guess well because of the hangman they got into all that junk yeah if she'd have just been dead from the beginning maybe the gang would have just maybe gave up their, well they might have seek their revenge their retaliation right. but if they would have just seek retaliation it would have been a lot more black and white there wouldn't have been all this sheep and wolf clothing type thing right and that's what made it good man was the fact that basically they let the snakes in and they didn't even realize it and but, Minnie and sweet dave were just so dang sweet and accept like <laughs> they were just like come try my stew hey I, I know i got um what do they have peppermint sticks five for a, a nickel or something it was just a sweet little place and they, they just yeah they were giving that damn it. good customer service yeah. <laughs> but i was sitting there thinking like the woman clucking the chicken or uh defeathering the chicken ma'am how uncomfortable would it be for them dudes to walk in though right especially out in the middle of nowhere you're trying to run a little shop and these hellions walk in right you just never know or, are they going to turn on you for your spot because it's like it's very snowy out here. Well, especially in those times. Yeah. Every single interaction was just a, basically a show of force. And it was basically I mean? like if you if they were good people, you were just kind of like you were just kind of had to give take your word for it because like you never know, I guess. Right. You just saw people at face value then, I guess. Well, back then someone could shoot you and ride off in a horse and man, like the chances. No, of them, you wouldn't know. Yeah. I mean, no one would ever know. It's a crazy movie, man. It was cool. And guys, a lot, also, if you've never played Red Dead Redemption, a lot of the same elements like the prologue, for example, in the game, you're in the snowy places and it's very similar to that. So if you like that vibe, you should try that out. I watched Red Dead Redemption. I went to YouTube and typed in Red Dead Redemption gameplay one time and I watched it for about 10 minutes and then I fell asleep. But the only thing I remember is the game starts out. They're basically going to somewhere like that, like mm -hmm. a cabin out in the middle of a snowstorm yeah. and there's somebody with a lantern. Uh -huh. And then I haven't seen any of it. She's been trying to get me to play that for like 10 years, but it's a great game if you like Western you know. stuff, which I don't. Like I said, I don't really love Western stuff, but Red Dead Redemption 2, that was just a really good game. That's the iconic game. A lot of very, love it. very good storytelling in that I game. I will see like YouTube shorts where it'll say like uh, 
guess which one's Red Dead Redemption, and it'll show like a bunch of nature pictures, and I have to guess which one was like the video but it's game. So, it's, it's hard it's to so tell nice. sometimes. The graphics are really nice right. on it. But it just reminded me, I, I hate to bring up that game, and like there's no reason to compare it because this movie was actually very good. But the elements of the like the snow and the western was just so similar. It was so dang similar. I think the snow and the blizzard just made it such a better movie. It really like nailed home the isolation factor. It nailed home the stakes of trying to figure mm -hmm. out like who's who they say they are in the cabin because there was nowhere to go. Yeah, because people could easily be like, well, you can just run off. Who cares? Well, even if they would have yeah. chose to just make it a snowstorm opposed to a blizzard, like with the blizzard, you couldn't even go outside. Right. Right. And that really made it just a you very intimate movie. Confound. What do you call it? Confined. Confined. I think it was interesting in this movie how they chose to go with like a wide angle lens. Well, obviously it was a good choice because of all the mountain ranges and stuff. It just mm -hmm. did a really good job showing those off, but also keeping your focus on like what the movie was trying to show you. But inside of the cabin, I'd be interested in watching this movie again because there was probably so many pieces of like information inside the cabin. And that's yeah. probably why they chose to go with the wide angle lens because there was probably You probably a lot. could have saw stuff in the background, but you were so focused on like what they intend you to focus on. The shots were not tight in this. Right. A lot of the times in TV shows, I mean, the shots will be so tight, you know, they'll come in on the face and then they'll move out a little bit. And with this one, man, everything was a wide open shot. It was open for interpretation. There was lots to look at. And you know what? That's what made the basement scene so surprising to me because we're like in this room for so long. I didn't honestly. I didn't even realize I don't think about it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think about to look under there. I don't know why, because in Glorious Bastards, but you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I didn't think to consider it, and I think that's because of the camera angle. Like, it just keeps you there in that steady spot, even though you are on the floor with. Um, Kurt Russell when he dies you don't think about going under there well the only thing that kind of gets me though is if you know the character Samuel L. Jackson's character he knew everything he knew he basically knew there's no way on earth they would ever pick you to take over this place or to be in charge of it because they don't like Hispanic people and so he knew everything down to the finest details I would think that he would think to clear the basement I don't think he knew about the basement you just think it was a secret basement yeah he didn't know about? I feel like the reason like maybe it was just something that only Minnie and Dave knew about or something so they could like hide or something yeah, yeah. in case of like an emergency or something when he unveiled the chair and there was the blood I was like oh yeah something bad happened to those two mm -hmm. this was a good movie I'm just saying it was just a good movie, man. It was a really good movie. I think it was a long movie, but I think it was necessary. Like going into the movie, obviously, we see how long it is because, you know, we just have to know that going into a movie. How are we going to have time to watch it? But I think sometimes it's necessary. And I feel like it, too, was a little long. It ran a little long. But this one right here felt short to me. It felt like it could have played out for another 30, 40 minutes to me. So it almost felt rushed. Right. In a weird way. The slow burn, Towards the end. The slow burn of it was nice, though. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know the point of the movie until about an hour and a half. Yeah, like, I yeah, didn't even yeah. know the plot yet. Like, I knew we, we needed to take this girl. But you want to know what I genuinely thought from the beginning? I thought, like, those two were about to be, like, a package deal. Kurt Russell and that girl. I wasn't sure that he was actually, like, that gun-ho where he would, like, actually, like, handcuff himself to, mm -hmm. a, to, like, a bounty person. I thought they would actually, like, turn on everybody together. But no. I mean, I'm not for beating prisoners, obviously, but I will say I was wondering why is Kurt Russell putting them straight elbows on your girl like that? Because she's up. Turned out she kind of deserved it. She <laughs> yeah. murdered a couple of people just horrifically in cold blood. So she I mean, was a fantastic all, actress, too. Yeah, that's the biggest thing about these movies, man. The act and you have to be a strong actor in these. You know, you can you can be like a side character in a Marvel project and you don't have to be the world's greatest actor. They can hide that, you know, but in these dude, if you have one bad line, like it's going to be obvious. And I, I think everyone in these movies are just phenomenal. Right. With really Samuel phenomenal. L in the room, you got to step it up a little bit. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Um, we have one more Quentin Tarantino movie. Am I wrong? One more. Yeah, once more? upon a time in Hollywood, right? That's the last one. And I'm sure he'll be making more and we'll definitely check those out too. But Guys, I'm having a lot of fun with this dude. So uh, join us, Batman. We have one more movie to watch. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, I do want to preface, though. We will, guys. Um, I'm not going to say immediately because I don't, I don't want to say that. But we are going to watch From Dust Till Dawn and True Romance. Those are... Oh, and Planet Terror, the other side of Death Proof. Right. So all those are Tarantino related, but they're not necessarily directed by him. So we're going to check those out. I kind of like going in order. You know what I mean? Like if we ever do like a... Uh, Who's another director? Steven Spielberg. Like Steven Spielberg. Christopher Nolan. It'd be really fun to them. like go and catalog their movies in order the same way we did Quentin Tarantino. Because I feel like it's uh it adds to the it's experience. Beneficial. Well, it's fun. It's like listening. It's like if you want to show me a new CD and then I just go to listen to track 12 and then jump to two. I mean, it right, makes yeah. sense to listen to it and watch it in order. So I'm excited to do that. I really like the format. Hopefully you guys do too. 
I don't, the only downside to that is if we get on like a uh, like a Michael Bay run or something like that, and then he just has a lot of movies, and there's people out there who just hate Michael Bay. Like right. I can see how it would be annoying in that way, but we try to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. But 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 going along with that, what you just said, like us doing it in terms of like release, that really did make like a res- this movie. If you watch this movie, but you never saw Reservoir Dogs, it enhanced Reservoir Dogs. It enhanced it mm-hmm. by yes, not only just by the actors portraying like. A lot of those people, it was just like the way, you know, the yeah. way it was. Yeah, just an extremely graphic, bloody, violent, horrific movie. So nothing Making else. deals, being gangsta. No feet, though. Well, the old girl did get shot in the toe. She did. Quentin would Is probably, that why you were geeking out? I, I was just geeking out because <laughs> the way she... No, I was, ge- I was geeking out because Samuel L. was so funny. Oh, what yeah. he said. Because she said I'm cheese and rice and then he had to... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guys, that was a lot of fun, man. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one.